It's a story, don't we? Yeah. There's too much light. My blessed mess forsaken! These fairy tales are much too clean to dull and dry a lifeless dream. A poem bleak, I'll craft them dark to make them grim. That's my hallmark. My guts fill up with pretty tales. Their pretty cuteness never fails to make me puke. To lose my wits, to lock my teeth and give me fits. Now the rancid stale and foul despise. The happy ending ah! Gross and nasty Make me howl Though they may be offending I'm here to build Two tales of light Of fear and woe Bring back the light I hate dumb luck A door up tuck My humble goal is to run the I'll let this exposition of misguided royal antics speak for itself. As a result, I'm sure you'll appreciate my refined sense of humor more, and admire my bloated sense of irony. Once, when wishing was useful, there was a princess so beautiful that the sun was astonished whenever it found her face. The beloved simple girl liked nothing more than playing with her favorite toy, a golden ball. One would think she'd aim higher. Why so sad, princess? Your tears would draw pity from a stone. Ah, you callous toad! I'm weeping for my golden ball. It's fallen into this deep, dark well. Lamentable loss. I'm a frog, by the way. How might I help? Fetch it for me. I'll give you money. No. I'll give you dead flies or maggots or whatever. Anything. If you promise to love me, let me sit at your table, eat off your plate, and sleep in your bed. I'll fetch your golden ball. I promise come to dinner soon. A talking frog with the strength of a retriever and a yen for intraspecies hanky-panky. But she never hesitates. That's confidence. Or something, cause she's thinking frogs live in water and croak and can't hook up with humans. But oh, princess. The well feeds into a cavernous country cistern, which is well-bred kin to a city sewer. But, hmm, those rats have to evacuate somewhere. Ribbit, 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 bit, bit. Which in frog means, have you seen a thing that looks like the sun, only smaller? His frog friends presumably help him out. He finds the golden orb. Ah, uh, see you at dinner. My best evening clothes are damp. Hope that's not a problem. I'm here, my man, to dine with the princess at her invitation. If you'd like to keep your job and live to perform it another day, let me in. Without further ado. Forceful fellow! My hat! Some creatures have an aura of command, and others are meant to be ordered around by frogs. My friend, thanks for rescuing the golden ball. Without it, the princess would be desolate, inconsolable. What further may we do for you? No, no, your majesties. The princess and I have an arrangement. Nothing special required. I'm fine. No problem. I haven't had a decent meal in donkey's years, but no, I'll just nibble a morsel or two. Lift me up, will you, dear? Hmm? Must you come so close? You smell like the swamp. My eau de toilette is much admired. Push your plate toward me, sweetness, so I may share your food. The frog's presence is bearable, and he enjoys her food. But every mouthful the princess takes seems to choke her. Hmm. I like uh, this direction. Well, princess, I'm tired. Let's go to bed. Uh-oh. It's senseless to ask the frog to behave. Fortunately, 
The princess takes him up to bed. Once you get used to the texture, they're not so bad. Cool and slimy makes for a nice change. Hey, what are you doing? That's not what... Hey, brute! You're human. And full size now. How nice. Yes, I am a king. A witch put a spell on me and made me a frog. Now you have lifted the curse. Come with me to my kingdom. Okay, sounds good. If you said your goodbyes, we should be off. My subjects anxiously await our return. Really? I wouldn't have thought they even knew about me. What? The gate to the Frog King's realm looks extremely promising. A golden gate can only mean happily ever after, right? They'll be fine, no doubt. There are rarely more than two generations presented in a given tale. Here's why. It's simply not credible, and would therefore be distracting to posit more than one generation of these dopes as capable of reproducing. Let's move along. The princess always plays alone? That's entertainment? That's healthy? Does her family think she's autistic or slow? Are they the cause of this? A royal person with an unwholesome fixation on a solid gold ball may be an arrogant, spoiled brat. Let's see how that plays. Make it stinky. Now I smell it. Promises to love the frog? Hmm, doubt it. She wants her ball back, and she thinks a simple dinner date will satisfy her obligation. Make it rotten.
creature over for dinner, but her? Huh? Frogs are supposed to be slimy and gross. Let's get real. And he has a job to do. The frog, who's eager for tonight's dinner and would prefer to not be on the menu, looks for the golden ball. It should be a challenge. The cistern needs to be more like a fetid sewer. Make it gross. Let's tone down those colors.
Scratch on toast. going to get in on his own. Let's make it multiply. Make it foul. Get it on! having dinner with the royal family, but he's much too well behaved. He's a king at heart, remember? Let's invite our other frog friends to make it more interesting. Make it disgusting.
ladies all affability and good manners at dinner. But some post-brandial hijinks of an intimate nature are sure to be on offer for dessert. Nom, nom, nom. tries to keep the frog at bay. So, let's give our slimy friend a little hand, shall we? Make it rotten. Right to fright, it must die! with a three-chambered heart in the bedchamber.
make it repulsive. Rims, 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 
way, cryptic. Stomping, stomping. Liquid have drowned my sorrow, but this is ridiculous. They waste my water. Hoping to see! Amphibian revenge could be an ugly thing! and the Frog King arrive at his estate. Maybe the royal amphibian's story was only half true. What if she has to become more froggy? Make it live, It's grim time! Looks a bit too human, don't they? Let's make them ribbity! Let's get this over with!
Just you two, please, no. I'm sure. The union of bewitched beasts and humans is a tiresome theme in fairy tales. Things always work out for the humans in the end. It all happens a bit predictably, doesn't it? What if there were really significant challenges to overcome? The princess doesn't play alone by choice. Look at her, unsocialized and unloved, obviously neglected and isolated in a dangerous place. Her repetitive motion is a clear sign of depression. Who, besides me of course, could blame her tears? I'll retrieve your ball, you willful waif, but not for nothing. Do it then and name your price, but I have only myself to get. That might be enough. Brush your teeth while I'm gone, and have a wash. Finding the ball is the least of his worries, really. There's a humongous rat that thinks he's just seen dinner. He gets the ball and goes. Ew, that liquid is nearly solid. We'll eat together tonight, then? He, you, are you fond of frog's legs? Undaunted by the princess's subtle threat, the frog shows up for dinner and takes over the proceedings. Ah, everyone settled in nicely. Decent vintage of fly larva? Oh, yes. May was a good month, and you, princess, say hello to my great uncle Fester. He's messing in your left ear, and that's Pete, my third cousin twice removed, down your dress. He's all affability and good manners at dinner, but some post-prandial hijinks of an intimate nature are sure to be on offer for dessert. Nom, nom, nom. I'm... I'm ill. I need solitary confinement. For several days. Nonsense, princess. I'll join you upstairs shortly. I'll just lead our guests out. Or into some boiling water. Never liked that branch of the family. Ew, words. Yeah, baby, I'm a toad, so what? Only a fisherman would think you a prize catch. Well, um, uh, I should say something clever, but, um, I can't think of anything. <sighs> This'll do. You. You're a human, sort of. And still alive. And you still look like a halibut. But I'll take you anyway. Well, better you than no one. Not much I wouldn't do to leave this place. Ooh, I can see your kingdom from my house. Perhaps the princess conceals her joy for court. More likely there's none to hide, leaving misery and abuse for an unknown future as bride slash indentured servant to a frog-like being is not an unqualified happy prospect. Toy with a frog's affections? Bad idea. Gobsmack a frog? Go to jail. Or worse, marry a frog? Yeah, you don't even want to think about it. May all our stories end so well. Until next time, read it.